understand. You don't get right squared, so I'll blow your ass. That little round window in the side. So what have we got so far? Game fish, you say? Game fish? Marlin? Stingray? Bit right through this piano wire. Please don't tell me my business again. Sardines in tomato sauce. High in omega-3. Uh, let's have a little look at this. Ah, oh, Jesus H. Christ. Mmm. Well, yeah. that's gonna improve these crackers. A little bit. Chief, Chiefy, best start that chum line going again. Hey folks, Kiltman here, Kiltman, at your services. Cheers, you all. Hope you're all doing very, very well. And keeping clear of things like this, you know, because it's summertime and you know, those beaches are open. Man. You gentlemen, do all you have to to keep those beaches safe. Those beaches will be open. Folks, we've got the news from NECA that we are going to get a Matt Hooper figure. Yes, to go alongside our Quint figure. Our gorgeous Sam Quint figure. Shark battle variation. Now, it's no surprise. We knew they were going to do this. We know later in the year there's going to be a rather large... Bruce the Shark coming out as well, to scale with, you know, the figures. Particularly Quint, obviously, because he's going to go inside that mouth, isn't he? So, um, we've got the huge debacle over the Brody figure, Chief Brody. Oh, God. Why, oh, why, oh, why is this become an issue now? They made the prototype. A few figures are out there. We've seen the figure. We've, have you seen the pictures of that figure? It looks like his pants are undone. It does, it does. Bit of an oversight there on the marketing. But Roy Scheider's likeness, his estate do not like the idea. Well, rather, they, they like the idea, or they'd like it a lot more if Necker paid a lot more. That appears to be the little stumbling block, the obstacle, the conundrum in getting our necker figure of the clothes. I mean, the, the nude, the new Brody is a different thing, but the clothes Brody is a, a complete uh, minefield now of legalities. The Scheider estate want more money. So, and let's be honest, you can't have Quint and Matt Hooper coming out and not have Brody. I mean, for fuck's sake, somebody get this sorted. You know, it's just. Logic dictates it's three men on a boat against a big great white shark. These are the three most iconic characters in action, thriller, horror, fantasy, you know, movies, big blockbusters. These three guys are the linchpin. Together they form that pyramidal linchpin on the genre. We all know and we can all quote them, we all adore these characters. For fuck's sake, get this sorted out. But we have got Matt Hooper's coming out. There's no date that I am aware of yet. That's the way it's coming out. And I'm pretty certain it will not be this year. I mean, how long was the wait for Quint to come out? Jesus Christ. You could have followed the, you know, the Great White Whale. Captain Ahab style for half your life. Before that, this guy finally surfaced. But hopefully, you know, with COVID sort of... <laughs> Don't speak too soon, kill man. Why am I saying COVID? COVID could come back at any time, rear its ugly head and completely foul everything up for us collectors. I know it messed around with infrastructures and governments and societies all over the world, but us collectors and movie fans really suffered big time with COVID. So Matt Hooper's definitely going to come out. We don't know when. And the teaser, well, you've seen it on the thumbnail picture. Uh, the teaser is just literally, 
it's a nice little dock scene, a dock, dockyard diorama, and you've got like, there's a chum bucket there, and the chum bucket really should be with Brody, should it not? And you've, but you've got the, the crushed paper cup from the uh, the, ju the first duel that uh, Hooper and Quint have together. Quint crushes the beer can, and uh, oh, beer can. Beer can. Mm. And then obviously Hooper, Richard Draper, just good with the paper cup. So you've got that a chum bucket, and his little blue sort of um, wide brim floppy sun hat is there. Now it's on. Look, look at that picture. What is it on? It looks like a great big either some kind of chunky biscuit or a, a sandbag. What is it? A kit bag? What is it? I mean, the scene where they make the deal with uh, Quint and Quint's claiming you, you've got silly hands, Mr. Hooper, you've been counting money all your life. That moment there, I mean, fair, he does throw a kit bag at Hooper, and Hooper just goes, throws it down, and then he has to tie a knot. He hasn't had to pass basic seamanship in a while, but he still does it anyway. Not that Quint's asked, you know, Quint just goes, <laughs> fucking throws it away. He's just taking the piss out of the guy. Um, but what is that thing on the dock? That's clearly a prop, an accessory that's going to be in this pack. But what is it? It's not like a, a you know, an anti-shark cage. It's not like a, an oxygen tank. It's not a spear gun. Uh, what the hell is it? It's not a, a shark tracker. What the hell is it like? And obviously, what's he going to be dressed in? The fact that he's got the sun hat there, the sort of like wide brim floppy sun hat, kind of, he won't, he won't be in a scuba suit. Although I can clearly envisage that they will bring out a variance where he's in, depending on the success of these figures, which already with Quint has been really enormously great and highly successful. Uh, I can imagine a shark cage to scale with Hooper as, you know, un undersea Hooper with the, uh, the scuba suit on, which could also double for, you know, looking at Ben Gardner's boat as well. So there's two scenes you can recreate there. I have a feeling they're going to do that. If you're going to do the great big shark, you're going to have a you're going to have an orca at some point, which you can put all the figures on. And I wouldn't mind betting that at some point you are going to get the Brody figure. They just got to sort this out. And please, guys, you know, you just want to get someone to sit them down at a table. You know, the shy of the state, Necker. You know, just get your fucking heads together. Neither of you leave this fucking room until this deal is sorted. Capiche? And you slam a machete down between them, you know. Only one of you walks out of here. But either way, you get a deal on Brody. Now, the Brody figure also is in his uh, police chief beige uniform, which is great. I like that. But on the boat at the end, you want him alongside this guy and all their fighting gear. Well, that's not how Brody looks. He's got jeans on. He's got a black jersey on. He's got a service revolver and, a, and a, a belt holster at his hip. That's the look you want. And also the ability to get his hands to, to operate the um, M1 Garand for the end. Smile, you son of a... Doosh. That's what you want. Give him a harpoon as well for the... Tsh, tsh, tsh. Give him the oxygen tank. I mean, the thing is, on the Brody figure that you, you've already seen the images of, he has the oxygen tank there. Why? Why? You know what? It just he doesn't use that in in that guise. It's nice to get all these bits and bobs. Uh, please, you know, don't you know, get me wrong on this. The more little props and accessories, the better. I love it, love it all. But have some sort of you know thematic continuity. So the Brody figure seemed to be doomed from the outset. Um, although I really do, you know, cross my heart, hope to die, never tell a porky pie. Um, oh, I'm doomed already. Uh, I reckon that's going to come out. You're going to see that at some point. The light of day will shine upon the little eight inch um, fully clothed Brody figure before long, I hope. Um, but Hooper, so what look are we going for there? Is he going to be in his denim jacket? All this sloppy stuff, his jeans and his little, his little um, sneakers and all that, his, you know, his deck shoes, his gloves. You know, what kind of other heads are we going to get for him? Because there's a great one, isn't it? Of course, where uh, 
you know, like they're tying the cleats off, and like Quint's back barking his orders, like, um, you know, tie it off down there. Brody, give him room! And like, the lion's gone taut across Richard Dreyfus as Hooper's backside, and he goes, as it tightens around on the cleats around him. And you have to try and prise him out of there. That would be a great face, that. <laughs> the, the worst wedgie imaginable. Um, so you've got that look. I see the scuba suit, yeah. Uh, you've got him without the denim jacket on and just with uh, a jumper on and a shirt underneath. You've got him like he goes to the Brody's house and the other, you know, I brought red and white. Uh, I wasn't sure what you'd be serving. Is, uh, is nobody eating this? Ooh! Now, in all my videos on Jaws, of which there have been, God, dozens and dozens, I know. And there'll be a lot more, you know that anyway. Uh, we really haven't covered Hooper himself as a character. And he's a great character because we all love Quint, we all love Brody. And I've discussed and been Quint so many times now that I kind of feel like we've left somebody behind. Brody's been covered quite a bit, but still, there's still a lot of work to do on Brody. A lot of work to do on him, and I do love Brody because he's the only one that has had two movies out of it, you know, Jaws 2 as well, and he's magnificent in that, even though we didn't want to do it, but it, he's great in it. Um, but Hooper himself, Dreyfus, it is magnificent. You would not have had that friction and that um, sort of dynamic on board the boat without the friction in real life that happened between Robert Shaw and Dreyfus, although the two did become friends but they did not hit it off very well at first. And that's Robert Shaw for you. And the young whippersnapper that is uh, Richard Dreyfus or was Richard Dreyfus, they fitted the characters to a T. Robert Shaw, the grizzled old professional, the veteran of many, many movies, stage, theater, TV, movies, every genre under the sun, a known icon. Richard Dreyfus, new kid on the block, but thinks he knows it all. That dynamic for Hooper, the ichthyologist and uh, uh, God, what's his name? Quint. <laughs> Quint, the expert professional shark fisherman. That grudge is there, and even though they came from different walks of life from the characters they're playing in the movie, but that grudge is there, that rivalry, that hostility, which why, which is why the um, the scar comparing sequence is so heartwarming because we we embrace all these characters, all their foibles and failings and all. And we, we accept them and we love them. And to see these two who have been at loggerheads pretty much throughout it come together and have a drink, drink to your leg, I'll drink to your leg. You know, that's wonderful. It's great to see and it, it warms you up. Spielberg, of course, brilliantly then puts it on its head by having the shark do its night attack, button the hull of the orca. And they've got to like, what's wrong with this? Quince, you know, quick, come on. And then, uh, so you've got that entire sequence. It turns all this on its head, all this new revelation that the guys can get along. So Hooper, in the book, we know that he's a bit more of a, a sort of poster boy for the yacht club. He's a good looking dude, and he wins the heart of Ellen Brody, because he has a big affair with Ellen Brody, Brody's wife, you know? Thank God they did not put that in the movie. Thank God, and he, they took out all the mafia influence. All that soap operatic shite that Peter eventually put in there to make his airport bestseller, you know, the exact epitome of what people sitting in airport lounges were reading all the time. It had to have all these elements, you know, gangsters, deals, affairs, romance, you know, and then thrills and spills. But it dilutes what is a very linear, character based but thrill roller coaster ride that is Jaws. So that affair had to be shunted out. Plus, you would not, you'd never forgive Ellen Brody if she had copped off and like bummed uglies with Hooper in the movie. And also, you wouldn't believe it, Lorraine Gary and um, Roy Scheider, their chemistry is so believable. They're in a yard, not too far from the car. How's that? Like you're from New York. <laughs> uh, but you know, they want to get drunk and fool around. Oh yeah. And she was lovely in those first two movies. She's lovely. 
I don't know what happened in the intervening years when she returned for Jaws of Revenge. Oh, Jesus. But then again, you, you wouldn't want to be recognisable appearing in that travesty, would you? Is that Lorraine Guy from the... No, it can't be. She look, no, no, it can't be. It's just someone that they've got and is using her name. Sadly, it is her. But, so you don't want that being in the story, in the movie version, obviously. There's just too much else going on. There's too much momentum to deviate and have affairs of the heart and that kind of shit. So, um, for Hooper again, he is the brainy, nerdy boffin. He is the academic. He is the high school boy, the university graduate, the ichthyologist, the scientist, the guy that thinks he knows it all. But And, he, and the, the great thing about his character is that he has been to sea. He, ha, he has experience with sharks. He knows his stuff, but he's not done it on the same terms that Quinn's has. He hasn't stared death in the face like Quinn's has in the USS Indianapolis disaster. So that rivalry is already born there. Brody hasn't got that grudge. It's, it's easy to take the piss out of Brody and Hooper and Quinn both do it because Brody's a landlubber. He doesn't like the sea, you know, he hates, hates the water. He knows nothing about sharks. He's constantly being told and, and outsmarted and upstaged by everybody. And that's the great thing about it, but it makes him lovable. That's why Hooper bonds with him so well. And that's why Quint has a, has a respect for him because on the law, oh, sorry, on the land, you're the law. Uh, bit of a twist on the first blood speech there. In town, you're the law. Oh, here it's me. Don't push it. Don't push it. I'll give you a war you won't believe. But. So Brody is the law on the land, but Quint is the law at sea, and he knows it, and he lords over that boat, like Captain Bly, basically. And Hooper knows the sea, but it's not his boat. And that rivalry, because Quint can also see, look, yeah, I've got a problem with you, because you do know your stuff, but I want to be in charge. I don't want to be upstaged by you. I don't want you, you know, poking holes in my strategy. And it's clever, that's why the, the dynamic between the three men on board the boat, or even on land in their meetings on land, are so dynamic and so important and so riveting. You don't even need Bruce the Shark to be making any appearances, or even John Williams's music to come in. Just watching these three guys together is electrifying enough, because that little that spark that goes around them, the rivalry, the one-upmanship, you know, it, it's brilliant, brilliant. And you know that when Hooper makes his, well, it is a suicidal, you know, dive into the air, the ocean, in the cage. Oh no, in the in the book he dies, in the movie he survives, um, which is a nice touch as well, a nice reversal uh, from what Peter Benchley wrote, because he'd won everyone's approval. I've said in previous videos, especially the big video I did about the uh, analysis of the Indianapolis speech, that Quint is, um, he's suffering from survivor guilt. And this is like a, a bit of a sort of a destiny waiting for him. What is that? What's that film series where they, they get on the plane and the plane, they survive but the plane crashes and all that and fate comes after them. Final destiny. Is it final destiny? Right? Something like that anyway. But that's the kind of thing that, that Quint's going through. He's still waiting to get that one shark that should have killed him back in the water, you know, when their ship went down. After there have been the bomb, the Hiroshima bomb. That's what he's waiting for. And I've discussed that at length before. Hooper's a different thing altogether. Quint has to die. He has to. I won't... I've said it too much already. But Hooper in the book dies. And it's it's horrible. And a bit... It's a waste of life. But it's also because he's a bit of a bad boy. Because he had an affair with Ellen Brody. You ditch that affair with Ellen, Bro Ellen Brody in the movie then there's no reason to kill Hooper. Hooper is a good boy, you like him, we bonded with him, and he's great with Brody, so you gotta keep him alive, and it's wonderful that he does survive. Perfect, I cannot fault the movie for that, and it's little deviations. All the changes they made to that screenplay from the original book are for the better. Every single thing is better. The book, the, the book is okay. I wouldn't say it's great. I don't think Peter Bench is a great writer at all, but, um, Although I did like the island, but then again, and I love the movie even more again. But, <laughs> but the movie of Jaws is infinitely better, superior to the book.
But Hooper survives. And Hooper... Hooper! <laughs> slower ahead. Slower ahead. I can go slower ahead. And you come down and chum some of this shit. <laughs> oh, he's here somewhere. There he is. There he is. Always making an appearance. But yeah, that, that dynamic between these guys is just riveting. And I don't think there's been any film since or beforehand that has come anywhere close to the realism, the intricacy, the character beats, the depth of character, and just that resonance between three. They are three real people you're watching on screen. The dialogue, the interplay, the overlapping dialogue, the, the way that they stutter and stammer and repeat things, Howard Hawksian style, it's beautiful. And you don't get that in many movies at all. And if you do, it's not to the same caliber as these three guys, who, although they had a, an absolute ordeal at sea, as everyone did make in the film Jaws, everyone suffered. Um, but And that comes across, you can see it in their eyes, you can see it in the, the blood, sweat and tears and the, the fatigue on their faces. But they're still acting their little socks off. Socks? Acting their socks off. Acting their socks off and delivering the goods. And it comes across so unbelievably well. But so, Necker's figure of Hooper. We ain't gonna get just one. As I say, we're gonna get one in sort of civvies. Because when he has the um, the, the meal, the same for the, the red and white he brings, he's got like a shirt and tie on as well, hasn't he? And it, but he's sort of, he, he's a bit of a louch, isn't he? He's got, he's got, he's trendy. He's got a jacket on and like a shirt and tie, but he's got jeans and sneakers on. He's got that, that, and the unruly curly hair and the beard. I mean, he is sort of, if they couldn't have got Richard Dreyfus, the next guy, and I believe he was asked, but Jeff Bridges would have been awesome, wouldn't he? You can't replace any of these people, but the only other person I could see visually in that role of Hooper would be Jeff Bridges. At that time, hippie, you know, a possible scientist, but a bit of a maverick at the same time. Bridges would have brought a bit more of a, a hippie sensibility to it. You've got more academia, certainly with uh, Dreyfus, but he's also got, he's got that yacht, that yacht. Even now, watching the film now, and we're now 2021. Jesus Christ, we're decades beyond this film being made. Even now, that yacht looks fan fucking fantastic. You know, I was always thinking, why go to sea in, in the ramshackle orca? You've got this, the cameras everywhere, and CCTV, and fucking all sorts of lights. Christ, you could do it. It's awesome. Also, where the hell? You know, you've got to remember when the timeline of this movie, when the first killings take place, then the 4th of July takes place, and then right, you know, for the mayor of Shark City, these people think you want the beaches open. Now, I just acting in the, the town's best interests. My kids, my kids, will on that beach too. Murray Hamilton wouldn't it be great to get a mayor Vaughan figure as well, like with his anchor tie and all that. Like, ah, oh, it'd be it'd be great. You see that deliberate vandalism of a public service message. I want these little paint happy bastards caught and hung up by the Busker Browns. Mr. Vaughan, Mr. Vaughan. I pulled the tooth the size of a shot glass out of the wreck hull of a boat out there. And it was a tooth of a great white. Show me the tooth. Yeah. I had an accident. He dropped it. But you don't have the tooth. <laughs> um, where was I going with that? Once again, I've gone off on a big mad tangent. Going into character, reenacting scenes. It's my pitfall, folks. It is my pitfall. Some would say that this is my pitfall as well. Who listens to them? Uh, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a great character uh, to bring out as a figure. And I'd love to know what the hell that other object is. The chum bucket it shouldn't belong to him. Are we going to get all the bits and bobs of Brody delivered in different figures until finally the Schneider estate caves in and goes, oh, go on then. What about, it is money. It just boils down to money. It's all it is. I mean, we're lucky that Dreyfus is alive and Dreyfus has signed you know, all the deals and all that. Like, So any likeness that he's got, is it's going into merchandising and marketing. So he, he's already signed that. That's okay. No worries there. And obviously, uh, Robert Shaw, 
mean, when Robert Shaw died, did they even do that? Did they even sign that kind of declaration? But obviously there's nothing stipulated in his estate's uh, the will and his estate's rulings that he can't be used, because clearly he's here. And I've got two of him. I've actually got that one fighting the hammerhead shark from, um, is it Dead Man's Shoes, Pirates of Caribbean Part 2. They're good figures actually, very limited in articulation, but they're, they're good figures though. Uh, so he's fighting a hammerhead shark there. So anyway, folks, let me know what you think about Necker's great tease. It is a good tease, I'll be honest. Just showing like the hat and a chum bucket, the crushed paper cup, and whatever the hell that thing he's sitting on is. I mean, what, what is it? It looks like a sandbag. I, I, I don't know. Someone's going to go. One of you out there is going to go like, Kill the man. It's the, the, the and I'm gonna go. Oh shit! Of course, but I can't think what the hell it might be. It might not even be part of the set. It's just part of the diorama. But I don't know. It seems too prominent to have the cap sitting on it. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me what it is. Um. So anyway, I like the tease. I like the fact it's coming out. But for Christ's sake, get this thing with the Shider Estate sorted and get that Brody figure. The figure in his police chief uniform, that's all well and good, that's great. But that's gonna be shit if you want Hooper and this guy together to battle the shark. And you're bringing out the shark. And we only see the shark when those three are together. So, you know, you need to get a Brody out there with the black jersey on and the jeans and his revolver. That's what you want. And his sunglasses. You know, that's what we need to have. And maybe like his little uh, handkerchief as he's dishing out the chum. So, Necker are going from strength to strength. This hiccup here with uh, the Brody figure, notwithstanding, we're finally getting McCready figure. Who was it that said that was due out on Father's Day? Who the fuck said that? Father's Day's been and gone. There ain't no McCready figures out. Apparently it's going to start shipping the end of this month. This is July now, July 2021. We're in the middle of July. So apparently the end of this month. But you know, I'll believe that when my, I get my shipping notice. So, I love the way NECA do this. I love the tease, I love that because it's such a big market for these things. But please, for God's sake, shorten that time between your teasing and getting the figures out. Over a fucking year for him. Come off it now. And we knew about McCready way back last year. So, for Christ's sake, get these fucking things done. There's people out there who've got McCready. They've got him. And one guy's even made his own modified um, flamethrower unit for him as well. Because that does not come with a figure. How has he got that figure? So then out there, the figure exists. Just get it, get it fucking shipped. Get it out to people now. Christ, what is your fucking hold up here? Do you want the moolah? Do you want our money or what? I don't know. I don't know. Cheers, y'all. I do get very animated about these things, but it's only because I'm passionate about them and I want them. And I want them now. And I want Brody. Christ almighty, I want Brody. And I want Hooper with Ben Gardner's boat. I want Ben Gardner's head with a little, a little thumb wheel. So you've got, you've got your, your scuba hooper, scuba hooper underneath there with his goggles on like and his little knife, diver's knife prying away at the tooth. So you've got the tooth as well. You do a little thorn wheel and <laughs> Ben Garner's head just goes, oh, <laughs> or I don't know. Aye, aye. <laughs> That'd be great, wouldn't it? And I can see them doing it as well. Well, that sounds a bit goofy with a little thumb wheel, but I can see a variant on that. You just have a, ho a hole of a boat, a big bite hole in it, and jagged wood, and you've got a little uh, additional head, which is Ben Gardner's head, and you just pop it in there. Ta da See, if you haven't thought of it, I have, and it's dead fucking simple. So get on the case, get it done. And let's uh, bring some fish home for supper. So folks, let me know what you think about the uh, the teaser for the Hooper figure and what you think about Hooper in general. I'm going to go in more depth on this because 
this started off as talking about the figure, but then I went into the whole movie. Because you can't, how can you help it? You dip your toes in the whole Jaws mythology and you fall right on in. You know, the Jaws just go, whoa, and you're in there. And all of a sudden, it's everything Lorraine Gary, affairs, Murray Hamilton, the gangsters and mafia, chum buckets, and fucking all. Oh, got everything. Everything's thrown into the mix. Ocean turns red. Oh, and the spider pounding and hollering. They all come in and they rip you to pieces. Folks, I have been and always shall be kilted for your entertainment. Oh, and by the way, I am wearing right now the ancient Mackenzie. That is my favourite tartan of all time because my family are part of the Mackenzies. We have no tartan of our own, as you guys know, so I collect everybody else's. But the ancient Mackenzie, it's a rare one as well. It's rare. I'm, I'm lucky to have that quality of it. So I love wearing this kilt. I love it. So, anyway, folks, I have been always shall be kilt man. Please keep it Celtic, keep it Celtic. Watch out for them big toothy bastards whose eyes roll over right. And I'm going to see you all. Namaste. <laughs>